Hello everyone, today I'm going to be making a really quick video about Blutricity and clouds. No, just Blutricity. Uh, to do that, I'm going to cover two of our other more common power systems, Industrial Crafts EU and uh, Build Crafts MJ. And the reason I'm going to do this is because Blutricity is very poorly understood. And uh, it's poorly understood because IC2 power is also poorly understood. So uh, let's get to it. So what I mean by IC2 power is poorly understood is that IC2 power and Blutricity are equivalent. Uh, that means that the way the power is sent down the system, it's identical, believe it or not. But uh, if I click over here on this engine, I'll get 77.79 volts, 128 amps, and 9,957 watts. Uh, what? If I click over here, I'll get a nice 34.9, uh, 35, basic 35 EU tick. So uh, one seems a lot simpler than the other, but I just told you they both are identical. Well, let's get to it. So first off, let's cover how IC2 power works. We all know that each of these blocks will generate 8 EU a tick from these panels, as it clearly states, and that that 8 EU a tick will be sent down the line every single tick in a packet of 8 EU. As I've established later on in my previous videos, that 8 EU a packet is the only thing that matters to the IC2 wires. This is how I ran 3000 volts down a copper cable over there. Uh, or 3000 EU a tick down a copper cable. So what we're getting here is not necessarily how big the packet is from this guy, the 8 EU a tick, but the combined total of all of these. Very simple. Uh, so how does that make it similar to Blutricity? Well, when we measure Blutricity, we get wattage, which is the same thing as EU a tick. Um, basically, what we have here in this setup is I have 35 EU a tick running through this line because I have five machines that are all outputting eight EU packets, but there's multiple of those packets. So I have five machines, each puts out an 8 EU packet, that means I have 5 8 EU packets, which makes 40 EU. Now you might be saying, well it said 35, well that's just because that's how much power this engine draws. If I click really fast here, you'll see that it shows 40 and 32 packets. That's because to get 35, you have to use a combination of 32 and 40 in series to make it so that it averages out to 35. So this, can, this has 40 EU ticks or 40 EU a tick happening through it at some points because we have five machines outputting 8 EU a tick. Simple enough. Over here I have 128 amps and 77.79 volts. Well think of that 77 volts as those 8 EU packets over here. So that volt is just that these panels generate a packet of 91 volts or 91 EU size but it generates two amps or two packets a tick. Now that's the key difference is in um, red power its machines don't always generate the same amount of quantity of power per packet. Um, for instance this generates half an amp so I don't even generate a full level of packet of that 90 volts or that 90 EU and that's the p difference in the power system is that everything in IC2, we get these solar panels over here and this one over here all generate only one packet a second to put down the line whereas these generate a variable size packet depending on what they need so as you can see over here I have a 128 amps because I have 64 solar panels that each put out two amps or two packets so I have 128 packets but only 80 volts now you might be wondering why I have 80 volts well, it's the same reason why when you run power a long ways in IC2, you lose power. So basically, I've lost EU because of the distance traveled. Unlike IC2, which has nice cables that don't lose EU, uh, there's no such thing in red power. So you're always going to lose power no matter how far you travel or how short. Um, its power loss, however, is static. So you can travel so many blocks and you lose a small amount of voltage along the way. IC2's power system is staggered in how it loses power. You travel X amount of blocks and every X of those blocks you will lose one EU. So uh, the power systems handle their power loss it's very very differently. Um, but you can think of it kind of roughly the same. 
If you travel too many blocks, you're going to lose power in both systems. And the power loss is determined by how much voltage you have. These put out 91 volts, whereas these put out 8. So these, after you know going the distance that will drop 8 EU, will be completely useless in power. But this can lose 8 voltage without any problem because it's at a higher voltage level or EU level. And so yeah, the power systems are really identical. Um, now for the math people, I have two magma crucibles here running at roughly 10 MJ each. It takes 64 solar panels here to generate 10,000 watts, and 10,000 watts is equivalent to 10 MJ. With an electric engine using the best upgrades you can put in it to get 10 MJ a tick, which it will never show for whatever reason, um, that's two, four MJ a tick output increases. It draws 35 uh, EU after a period of time, yeah, about 35 EU. Um, and that generates the same amount of power. So that kind of gives you an idea of how equivalent the powers are. However, they can't be converted to each other. Uh, nothing can actually convert to Blutricity at all. Uh, Blutricity is its completely unique power system. No other mods convert to it. It converts out to Buildcraft energy, but unfortunately there's no way to get back to it. Um, as for directly from EU to Blutricity, there's also no way. Um, or from uh, Blutricity to EU, there's also no way. You would have to use a Magma Crucible into Lava if you wanted to go that route. So, yeah, there's not much conversion that can happen between Blutricity and Industrial Craft. You have to use Lava, which I've already established is a really bad way of changing power. But it is possible if you want it. So, yeah, this is just a quick covering of Blutricity's power system. There are only three blocks that provide Blutricity power. That is the solar panels that I have down there. There's also this, which is a thermopile right here. This is like a Stirling engine. There is lava underneath here. As you can see, you pour out lava. Stick a solar panel in there. Does that work? There we go. There's lava in there. And then there's water around the sides. It generates power very much like a Stirling engine, but it actually requires, you know, more realistic physics to generate the power. Um, over here we have solar panels, very simple, they generate power from the sun. And here we have a wind turbine, which generates power from air. Uh, these are really big, but they're cool because they actually move, as I'm sure you've probably noticed, they can actually move, which is really cool. And it's got a full power box right now, but if I replace it with a new empty power box, bam, it should start to spin after a bit. And uh, this generates the most power out of all these systems. It can generate, uh, as you can see, thousands of watts. Um, it's variable based off of a whole bunch of things. Uh, if you click on the interface, it will tell you the speed of it. And it's kind of complex. I don't want to cover it too much. But this is the highest power. This is middle power. And this is the lowest power. Basically, that's how the system works. And I just wanted to show this off. This has just been a quick little video about Blutricity. Um, if you have any more specific questions about the tubes or the piping or whatnot, I'll cover those later on. Right now, I'm focused on just covering the power systems between all the different mods. So I hope you all enjoy the video and have a good day. Lava.